Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today, we have a quick update on a couple of ongoing longevity trials. So let's get straight into them. The first is an update on Dr. Harold Katcher's lifespan study. You can find the details in our earlier videos, but very briefly, the study was to see how long rats would live if they were given E5 every 90 days. The experiment started in February 2021, when the rats were 25 months old. There were 16 rats, 8 controls and 8 treatment, and all were female. The data and the calculation came from a post by Josh Middledorf on his blog, Aging Matters. The last remaining rat, Seema, has died. She was 1,464 days old, which is just over 48 months or four years. This is roughly equivalent to 120 years for a human, using a conversion rate of 2.5 rat months to one human year. First, comparing to the control group, the median lifespan was increased by 9.6% and the maximum lifespan by 22%. In general, it's easier to increase median lifespan, so this maximal life extension is quite impressive. Seema also broke the record for the longest lived Sprague Dawley rat by 5%, the previous record holder having been on 40% calorie restriction. I don't have any more information than this right now. The trial was sponsored by Heels, who publish a monthly newsletter, so hopefully there will be some more information in that at the end of March. Also looking forward to a more complete write-up from Dr. Catcher and his team. The second update is from Dr. Aubrey de Grey's robust mouse rejuvenation study. We talked about this in his interview on Modern Health Span about a month ago. I've linked to the interview above. In summary, the study is to try various interventions and combinations of interventions on middle-aged mice to see which can provide the best life extension. The study as a whole began on February the 26th. The cohorts are staggered at two-week intervals to reduce the spikes in the treatment processes. The first cohort are on only rapamycin. The second set of three cohorts started on March the 12th, one with a senolytic. The senolytic of choice is nevitoclax, bound to galactose, with the expectation that this will preferentially target senescent cells. The second was hematopoietic stem cells treatment, with the cells being transplanted in from younger mice. And the last was a combination of the three. There will be another cohort on March the 26th, which will include gene therapy to promote telomerase and possibly another combination. I think the most fascinating of these groups are the ones with a combination of interventions. There have been few, if any, studies which have looked at combination in this way, to so it's really exciting to see how they will turn out. It's also great to be able to receive regular updates on the progress. You can catch these on Twitter and on the LEV Foundation website. Thank you for your attention, and I will speak to you all again soon.